Ladies and gentlemen, let's for game into the comp video. Are we going to be seeing an updated, enhanced version of the PlayStation 4? A high-performance PlayStation 4, if you will. Well, you may immediately dis dismiss these rumours as just idle speculation and gossip, but they have been actually mentioned by the SCE Executive Vice President in an interview with 4Gamer. He was asked a variety of different questions, including the PlayStation 4 performance boost, which obviously we know, for example, that Microsoft have done various work on the SDK of the Xbox One and the actual system itself. For example, they've given better tools to developers so that they can better isolate the cause and effect of which code is sucking up performance on the hardware, uh, get better utilization out of the system's ESRAM, that type of thing. But they've also done a myriad of actual performance enhancements to the system in terms of the various upsta updates they've released. For example, they've allowed access to the 7th CPU core of the Xbox One. They've released multiple different drivers or improved the drivers of the Xbox One's uh, GPU. And these, of course, are to squeeze every last little bit of performance out of the system. Because, after all, just like the PlayStation 4, the Xbox One is fixed hardware specification. You can't do anything about that. You can't take the CPU out and put in a better CPU for the sake of argument. Sony are aware of this and they are now talking about their own performance boosts, but they are not talking about specifics. These comments come from NeoGAF.com where they have put up a translated, shortened, but translated version of the interview. So on the PlayStation VR front, they said that, well, prices and release date will be announced when it's time. That's it. So if you're wondering how much it's going to cost, sorry. On the PS4's Blu-ray capability, in terms of both 4K and Ultra slash Ultra HD Blu-ray, current PS4 does not support Ultra HD Blu-ray support is still under consideration, whatever that means. On PS4 performance boost though, can't talk about specific content. Think's performance boost might require a lot of timings when using something better than x86 architecture. In other words, it is possible. For example, there are ideas about releasing a standard PlayStation 4, which I'm assuming that that would be the one that's available now. And they consider it to be a high performance PS4. Now, I will, before I do some analysis on this, mention as well, in regards to the beta, there are no, zero, nada, zilch, first-party titles in development for the PlayStation Vita currently. They will leave all development to third-party developers, and Sony are now focusing entirely on the PlayStation 4. I think it's fair to say that third-party developers and the beta are not really the best of chums, when one considers that, well, you know what, I don't even have to let you consider. Just look at the release schedule for the PlayStation Vita and be sad. Uh, I think Sony have really hurt the Vita, to be honest. I don't think it's just that they've not released a, a swathe of games for it, because they have tried. But I think the prohibitive memory card prices for the system and other issues have really hurt the system as a whole, if I'm honest. But... Getting back to the major point that I want to make, well, the major point I want to discuss. What in the hell are they going to do to the enhanced PlayStation 4? Because obviously it's not an SDK update, because, well, that doesn't make sense. What is it then? Well, assuming they're not referring to something less interesting, like, for example, an update to the system's Blu-ray player, or... Let's say, for the sake of argument, shipping the system with a better hard drive, which is probably not what they're referring to here. They are naturally referring to a better CPU, GPU, or possibly memory. In other words, the actual lifeblood, the heart, and the liver, and the lungs of the system. Just for your records, the PS4's GPU runs at 1.84 teflops, roughly, and the system Therefore, it's running at 800 megahertz, 1152 shaders. The CPU is, of course, an 8-core AMD Jaguar x86-64 hybrid. It is, as I mentioned, 8 cores, but each 4 cores 
uh, make up one module. There's two modules, and that would be the the actual system's processor, which is running at 1.6 gigahertz. In effect, the processor is not tapped out in maximum clock speed, but the system, even if you were to read the um, the original. I guess you could call it the marketing PDF that AMD released for the system, which was basically trying to sell the features to the system um, to prospective vendors. They called it for low power, low performance devices. What Sony and Microsoft have both done is they've put more of these processes together. There are issues with that. Specifically, the developers have to, and I've mentioned this before, that you have to be careful about writing or reading from another uh, modules cache so let's say you're reading from module A's cache and you're using a processor that's on module B if you do that you can have quite high latency and it can be just as bad as GDDR5 that's not me making that up that's actually according to Naughty Dog themselves so that's the thing but what about performance boost how when how could they do it well the easiest way to explain it would be an overclock. Not necessarily an overclock, but just simply increasing the clock speeds. As we know, the Xbox One's running at 853 for the GPU, 1.75 for the CPU, therefore it's not out of the realms of possibility that Sony could release a special version of the PS4 whose chips could run at that clock speed, which is all of course to do with yields, and they could run those chips at let's say 1.8 gigahertz and let's say 900 megahertz, and that would give them a a fairly decent performance boost in terms of the actual GPU's output. It would mean that the system's uh, actual raw GPU performance would be around 2.073. Well, I guess you can say almost 2.1 TFOPS. Not bad. It's not a massive jump by any stretch of the imagination, but eh, it's an improvement, right? It, that's not enough, however, to get the games that were struggling at, let's say, 900p to suddenly run at 4K. And I was reading through some of the threads, or, uh, some of the comments on NeoGAF, and just kind of doing my own little thoughts and opinions on this. And the main reason I can see Sony doing this would be for a larger performance boost, or possibly for PlayStation Virtual Reality, which would make sense. It would mean that games running on those systems would look better. At the end of the day, the PS4 is not that powerful compared to the PC hardware out, and it certainly won't be in a year's time. It's just that simple. The GPUs, for example, that are released next year for the PC are just going to be ludicrously powerful. Um, and some of this is, of course, down to the fact that they're going to be shrinking in um, FinFET process. They're going to be either 14 or 16 nm. The fact they're going to be running on HBM2. The PS4 has around 5.5 gigabytes of memory reserved for games. That's not according to me. That is according to either official leaks, comments from developers, or in the case of the Xbox One, it actually says so right there on the SDK documentation. 5.5 gigabytes available for games. It's not bad. It's a massive improvement over the previous generation of systems. For example, the PS4 had around 400, I think 480 megabytes once you've taken OS reserves into account. But the next generation of GPUs from Nvidia, for the sake of argument, next year will have 4, 8 gigabytes as standard HBM2 up to, and I'm not joking, 16 gigabytes for the higher end devices and theoretically it could go up to 32 gigabytes in 2016 all for 4k amd are going to be the same thing and those gpus are going to be running at one terabyte per second memory bandwidth it, it will be ludicrous i don't need you i don't need to tell you that pc is more powerful than ps4 but there is a reason that these this is really happening and it is mostly primarily to do with virtual reality and the advent of 4k displays i'm saying that if sony were going to do this it would have to be a considerable performance boost to really warrant it but that kind of puts you in dicey territory because then let's say a game comes out i'm just going to say killer fun 3000 how the balls is that going to work that's what i want to know well, there are a couple of ways that I can see. A, it just doesn't run on the standard edition PS4. This would be akin to, let's say, the Sega Saturn. I don't know if you guys remember that system, 
but it was one of my favorites. There were four megabyte RAM carts available, and on some games, you physically could not load that game without the RAM cart. X Men vs. Street Fighter, Vampire Savior. If you put the cart in without, so if you put the game in without the cart, it would just give you a warning screen saying, Nope. What are you doing? Put the cart in, you silly person, you. If you put the cart in, and of course the game would boot. Other games, let's say Marvel vs. Cap. Uh, no, not Marvel vs. Capcom, Marvel Super Heroes had a 1 megabyte RAM cart. What would happen is if you did not put the cartridge in, the game would still boot, but you would have less animation on the sprites and the backgrounds would have less detail. In short, the game would still run, but it would just look crapper and it would be considerably further away from Arcade Perfect. It was still better, by the way, than the PlayStation version because the Sega Assassin actually had more RAM but it had problems with 3D capabilities, but that's off topic. So, there could be a possibility that the game would still run, but all, all that would happen is it would say, oh, this is running in a standard PS4, I'm gonna dial back the resolution, or I'm gonna dial back the frame rate, or I'm gonna dial back the graphical settings, what have you. So in short, they would release the game with the same assets, it would just simply say nope you're running on a sucky machine i'm going to take note of that and run accordingly this would be a little bit i guess like let's say a pc where you can choose the resolution so rather than let's say for the sake of argument running at 1080p um you would might if you've got a better graphics card you could say run at 1440p just for the sake of argument another possibility is that it would primarily be down to virtual reality games. So in short, there would be no real difference unless you put in a PlayStation VR game. Of course, all of this is speculation. Sony are not confirming this. They're saying they're considering this. Would I like it? I don't know. I don't know. My, I'll probably think differently tomorrow. But I guess it depends. I would prefer the generation to be shorter, honestly. I would personally prefer the systems to be alive next year, 2016, and then 2017 we see a release of new systems from both Microsoft and Sony that are more powerful than what they are now by a considerable margin. That's my opinion. Because I think the systems were released at a bad time. I just do. It's not Sony's or Microsoft's fault. They had systems that were out for so long they were already really long in the tooth so the feasibility of them waiting let's say another two years for let's say 2015 was quite low they just couldn't keep doing that the systems were basically reaching maximum saturation the develop in terms of the sales developers just could not keep running on the same hardware because the xbox 360 and ps3 at that point were just pieces of crap i'm sorry i know that's harsh to say but they just were the developers had put so much work into trying to get the games running. You know, you could get certain games running on the systems, fine, but people were just at that point thinking, well, we've seen it all. They just, developers could not do any more tricks. So, visually speaking, they tapped the systems out. They'd done the best they could. I'm not saying that you couldn't release excellent games on the system. You certainly could do that, but there wouldn't be the visual... There wouldn't be anything that would be new to bring in the games and that's why the sales on the last systems were starting to slow down and there was so much excitement. Developers were quite literally begging Microsoft and Sony to release new systems. The amount of RAM they had to work with was just too small, the, CPU, the GPUs were just not powerful enough and so on. So I think they didn't really have a choice but to release the systems when they did. The problem is their choice of releasing the systems then ultimately meant that they were really stuck with certain parts that just kind of sucked. And I don't mean that as in the parts were bad, I mean that they were in this really weird time where you've got this real quick transition now in 2014 to 15 with high bandwidth memory 2 uh, starting to become a thing. You've got the reduction of uh, die sizes, now uh, once again we're going to like uh, 14 and 16 and M. And obviously, if they'd released in, let's say, 2015, they still could not have done that. They still would not have had access to, let's say, 16NM, most likely. 
just because of how things work but it just goes to show you that over the last couple of years we've moved really fast and it, it just is what it is so my concern is that if we are stuck with the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox one for another two years after let's say after this year because I think this year we're fine I think we're good next year if we're stuck for it for another two years so that's gonna be like 2016 17 I can see we're gonna have problems I can see developers are gonna have the same problems that they've got now because Honestly speaking, Unreal Engine is starting to really move forward. Um, you've got lighting techniques like SVOGI, which they just can't implement with the current generation of systems. There's just not enough performance there. It's just what it is. Would I like the PlayStation 4 enhanced version? I guess it depends how they handled it. I'm not Sony. I don't know what their plans are. I would like it in theory. If the price was right my concern is that it would alienate and piss off a lot of people and it might confuse customers it wouldn't to to people who know what they're buying if that makes sense but let's say you're you know john your little johnny and your mom is buying a system for you she buys you a regular playstation 4 but she doesn't know the difference in the price between why there's a difference in price all she sees is enhanced she just buys the regular PlayStation 4 because it's, let's say for the sake of argument, $100 cheaper. I don't know what the price difference is, once again, pulling out of ass. It's $100 cheaper. She buys the standard PlayStation 4. Six months later, down the line, she buys you a game, or little Johnny the game, and it doesn't run because it's going to require an enhanced system. That would suck bolts. On the other hand, if little Johnny got the game, and it just looked worse than his friend Bill's, because Bill has the enhanced PlayStation 4, I think that could work. I don't know. This one's a really tricky situation. Really is. Let me know what your thoughts on this one. I would, I personally, I, I personally would not mind it. If it was handled correctly. If it was handled smartly, and if, if it was abundantly clear, if there are certain games which cannot run on a standard PlayStation 4, I wouldn't mind. On the other hand, I imagine some people would be really pissed. And I guess that's the thing of consoles, because it's like, if you buy a console, you always want to be able to play the, the games on that console. That's why it's a console. It's a thing. I would prefer... To be honest, an upgrade unit for the PlayStation 4, which just literally plugs into a SOP, but really that's not possible with how they designed the PS4, at least as far as I understand it. That would be better. Literally, it's just a little card, plugs in, improves the performance, it's sold with games. Let's say certain games, you could buy either an enhanced version of the game, which comes with that little card, which let's say costs an extra 20, 30 pounds, increases the performance of the system by let's say 25%, 30%. That could have worked, but as it is, it didn't happen, so we've got the situation we've got now. I don't know. It's too early to really judge whether and what this news actually means. What do you think? Tell me. Anyway, for now, I'm going to get going because I've rabbited on far too long. Take care of yourselves and have a good evening. Bye for now.